for you. There's no optometrist present. And so far, they're getting away with issuing prescriptions that way. Uh, online exams, I think the only thing I want to say is coming soon. Uh, we're very, very close. I, I really shouldn't say exams, really I say acuities, but it will happen. And I do know a lot of optometrists say I'd, like, I'd love to get out of doing refractions. <laughs> yeah, the, this, this is alternative. You know, they've stumbled quite a bit. Have any of you ever tried to do uh, the alternative thing? It's really cumbersome. You need two devices online separately. One telling you what to do and you're looking at the other one. And when you read the small print, they won't issue a prescription unless you're between 18 and 40. So they won't do anybody's presbyopic. And the other thing is, their system starts with your previous prescription. You have to know it. And it's only really making a judgment as to whether or not your prescription has moved. Now, here's what's going on in India. Optometrists on motorbikes, or 500 and some of them in Delhi. <laughs> How many of you would like to try this? Uh, the traffic in that city is so bad that this works, because you can get around on a motorbike. That box in the back looks like a pizza delivery box, and that's what it is. But in it is 100 frames and the basic kit for uh, doing a basic eye exam. And it works for them. These guys that are doing this can do four or five eye exams a day. They get a commission on the sale of the eyeglasses. The, 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 the cost, wait, wait to hear this, the cost of the eye exam is two U.S. dollars for you or as many people in your family as you want to have examined. <laughs> uh, now, let me move on to something else. I'm going to move on to what I believe is one of the things, if not the most important thing, that's going to save private practice optometry in this country. And I'm serious about this. And some of you know about iBrain, which we're now calling NeuroLens. I have to have a declared interest here because I'm on the board. This business is the first business ever that has really figured out computer vision syndrome. Actually, that's a little bit wrong because there was a guy in England in the 1930s who figured it out and everybody laughed at him and said he was in the business of trying to sell equipment. A guy named Andrew Turville. And you can look him up on the internet. A smart, smart guy. What he was doing it was he, he wrote in a book he wrote called Infinity Balance, he wrote that God didn't make us to sit at the desk and do paperwork. <laughs> this is in the 1930s. We were made to be hunters and gatherers and all this sort of thing and look out in the distance all the time. And now that we're doing paperwork at a desk in the 1930s, our eyes are converging to the point that our brains don't like it. So he came up with a system to do an eye exam. First he did the acuities in each eye. And then he put a trial frame on you with whatever the result was. Then he put a divider like this right in front of your nose. So your left eye couldn't see what your right eye sees and vice versa. And then out at, they call it six meters, 20 feet, he put two letters, nice big letters, L and F. Okay, Joe, what do you see? I see E. Good. Make the letters smaller, bring it forward. Make it smaller again, bring it forward. What do you see, Joe? I see LF. Uh-oh. He said, we got to get it to where you're seeing an E. And then he put in, usually, base and prism until you say, oh, I see an E. And that's what he prescribed. And you know what? He was curing migraine headaches with this. And it was, it was working in a pretty serious fashion. And then the war came along and all this sort of thing. It all kind of died because he was not in the optometry profession. He was in the profession that did die after the war in England called orthoptics. And that was sort of the end of that. Until some guys in South Dakota, and yes, there are some people who live in South Dakota. I was talking to one a little earlier. <laughs> uh, stumbled across some of this and found that, you know, you could cure 
some migraine headaches, so-called migraines, with base in prism. And I got to think, well, how do you, you know, how do you really do this? First of all, you got to be able to measure it, right? You got to be able to measure convergence disparity, and then you got to know what to prescribe. And you don't want to do just glasses for reading. You'd like to do, you know, a full-time universal use pair of glasses. So here's 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 what's happened. Uh, new measurement device. It's on display here, and and guess what? Two minutes, maybe three minutes. This thing will t will measure how much prism is required at distances from infinity up to a reading distance. How much prism is required for your eyes to reach a comfortable point of convergence? And that's measured, uh, I'm going to oversimplify now, but that's measured by looking at one eye and the other, one eye and the other, one eye and the other, real quick. And you don't, you don't realize that's what's going on when you look in the instrument. But if, if the eye that's not looking at the target then moves back out or moves in or something, uh, the eye tracking says, whoops, we got to get to where it doesn't move and figure out how much basin prism, usually basin, as I said, is going to be required. Now, whoops, I pressed the wrong button. No, I'm just bringing up some data on that. We don't need all this, but it's, it's really sophisticated because it's doing central vision and peripheral vision, not just central vision. And I, I won't go through all this. This is stuff I stole off their website. And uh, what, you, what you get down to is what you see there. Instead of your eyes looking straight down through the pair of glasses, you've got this uh, requirement for convergence. And the, the lenses, the, the lenses that are being made uh, to do this have what's being called progressive vertical prism. So it's increasing as you look down through the lens, both for single vision and for uh, progressives. Both, both types of lenses are available. Uh, where it's really working is what we call, with what we call computer vision syndrome. And computer vision syndrome, which th these guys have been studying extensively now, manifests itself in ways that most patients, and even most optometrists, don't stop and think about that's computer vision syndrome. Like pain in your shoulders, the back of your neck, not just headaches, dry eye. Uh, dry eye is a, a result at t sometimes from uh, this convergence disparity, so-called computer vision syndrome. And now that we're in a digital society, it's pretty obvious. The Vision Council, uh, well, th this is just showing the growth in use of digital devices, which we all know has gone through the roof. Now, this is Vision Council data. The Vision Council says 65% of Americans report experiencing some symptoms of digital vision syndrome. What the eyebrain people have said is, uh, wow, <laughs> that, that's a lot, but let's pick the really bad ones. And so they're looking for people who have at least three of the five uh, symptoms that you see over there on the right-hand side. And those are the people they're focused on right now. The, uh, well, these are just more statistics. Let me get on, th on through this. Uh, these are not really terribly important for, uh, for here, but there's back to that 65% number. Uh, the key thing that's coming out of this is that um, 82 or 83 percent of patients who have these symptoms are reporting the substantial reduction in symptoms with these lenses. That's huge. Around 50, 54 percent are reporting virtual elimination of symptoms. And guess what? You can't do this online. <laughs> this is why I believe that this really is a key especially with medical optometry. Now you're creeping into neurology in a way. But this should be for optometrists, not neurologists, because neurologists don't want to cure you, I don't think. That's, that's not a nice thing to say, but they love to have people come back every other month, you know. Uh, we don't want to do that in optometry. Uh, just a bunch more 
things I threw together here. Uh, by the way, you know, a lot of people are saying one way to help when you have computer vision syndrome problems is look out the window. You know what? That really makes sense. I don't believe there's any clinical evidence that blue light causes computer vision syndrome. I think that's smoke and mirrors. Uh, anyway, just, just some more statistics, but what you really ought to do is go take a look at this. They're way back in the back on the main floor, but you, you, ought, to, you ought to take a look at it because this is something that is, is going to change. I think it's the biggest thing to hit optometry in 90 years since the invention of the phoropter. And I think once people have a success with it, such as many of the eye brain optometrists have had, especially in Southern California where they have about 20 clinical locations, I think once people had experience with it, this is going to become the way to do things. Uh, uh, just a bunch, this, this is all things we've talked about, so let me just go through this real quick, but it's more explanation. By the way, all this tries into the trigeminal nerve. You know more about the trigeminal nerve than I ever will. But it, it's, it's amazing how many things your trigeminal nerve does. By the way, I took my wife, the ophthalmologist with me, to one of the clinics in Southern California, and I filmed some patients. The patients didn't know who I was. But I wanted to see what they would say, and I decided to film it. The very first woman I talked to said, I've had severe migraine headaches for 18 years, virtually every day. Can't hold down a job, got to stay in dark rooms. You've all heard these kind of stories. So I heard about this place. I thought, I've tried everything, but I'll try this now. Ordered a pair of glasses. They called me, said they were ready to pick them up. I went in there really busy, and the lady said, sit here. Here's your glasses, try them on, see what you think. And I'll be back with you in just a minute. She said, had a splitting headache. I put the glasses on and my headache went away instantly. Instantly. And I said, wait a minute, are you telling me your headache went away instantly? She said, yeah, it did. Three people that night told me the same thing. We walk out of there. My wife says to me, you can't use that video. I said, why? She says, nobody will ever believe it. I said, do you believe it? She said, I don't know. She got on the phone with her ophthalmology friends and a couple days later and comes back to me and says, I believe it. Because of the trigeminal nerve and all that. She says, what these people are calling headaches aren't headaches. They're nerve pains. She says, like if I pinch you in the neck and it hurts like hell, as soon as I let go, it stops. She says, that's what it is. Then I, then, I, then I said to her, what about this dry eye thing? Some of these people say they had dry eye. She says, don't understand that one. <laughs> so then she gets on the phone with her friends again, comes back and says, I believe that this can cure some dry eye. And she says, here's how you explain it. She says, it's well known by even lay people that people tear up for different reasons. You can't predict why some people tear up and why some won't. You don't know what the stimulus is going to be. Just dry eyes, same thing, just the other direction. She said to get rid of some of the stimuli that have been causing neck pains or headaches or whatever. She said, yeah, you just may solve dry eye problems. Anyway, this is more just the diagrams of this convergence disparity that I was uh, talking about. Um, I guess that's pretty much the end of the eight points.